Welcome back, my friends. It is time for you and I to get our minds aligned with the truth of God through the morning mindset. This time where we refocus our thinking first thing as we start our day so that we can live in a way that brings honor and glory to Jesus Christ. I'm honestly a little bit eager to get going with today's episode because we're going to begin studying a three-chapter section of the Gospel of John. And to me, these are some of the most encouraging and empowering and exciting passages in all of the Gospels. And I think the reason for that is the context in which Jesus spoke these words. Let me set the scene for you. Jesus has just enjoyed the Passover meal with his disciples. All 12 of them were there. They shared the meal with him. They had some very interesting and deep conversation during dinner. And it was during this dinner that Jesus revealed that one of his disciples was going to betray him. And if you know the gospel story, that was Judas, and Jesus revealed that it was Jesus, Judas during the dinner, and Judas left. And this section that we're going to begin reading, starting in John chapter 14, is what Jesus told his disciples. It's what he was teaching them and telling them after Judas had left. And the context was most specifically, is that Jesus knows he is about to head to the cross. They're going to go out into the garden. Jesus is going to begin praying, and it's there in the garden that he's going to be handed over to the chief priest guards and be taken on his way to the first of many crazy trials that he went through. And Jesus is preparing his disciples for what is about to come, and he does so through teaching them some amazing amazing things. And I think this is very relevant for us because here we are on planet earth. We are waiting for Jesus to return. We're waiting for the fulfillment of all the biblical prophecies about the end of the world and about the return of our savior. And we need to know what Jesus says about our situation and about his role in our lives when we are without him, because his disciples were about to be without him. He was going to the cross. He was going to the grave. He knew he would be returning to heaven. And so the instructions he gives to his disciples are very powerful for us. So let's dig in to John chapter 14 today. Jesus says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Now let's pause there for a moment. We're just getting started. And let's understand or rather remind ourselves about the context. Why would Jesus say to his disciples, don't let your heart be troubled? Well, they had just witnessed one of their comrades leave the table and go on his way to betray Jesus. So they knew something was up. They knew that all the things Jesus had talked about over the years that they had followed him were about to start rolling in high speed toward the cross. They knew this difficult time was ahead. And they were troubled. They were understandably bothered. And Jesus is counseling them in the midst of that concern and worry and perhaps even fear that was starting to well up in their hearts. Let not your heart be troubled. My friends, we need that command. We need that exhortation during this time of our lives, don't we? As we watch a pandemic sweep the globe, there's all kinds of fears that can rise up. There's all kinds of weirdness that can happen in our world among the people around us. There's sickness, there's economic impact, there's all kinds of things. And I believe Jesus is saying to us, just like he was saying to his disciples, don't let your hearts be troubled. And notice his prescription, so to speak. He says, believe in God, believe also in me. Now, Jesus is talking about a deeper belief than just intellectually saying, yes, I believe there's a God, or I believe Jesus was a good man who lived on the earth. No, he's talking about a deep spiritual belief, a trusting sort of belief. I mean, I'm believing right now that I can trust the chair I'm sitting in to hold me up, but I don't really put that belief into action until I actually put my full weight on the chair. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, if you don't want your heart to be troubled, you need to trust 
in God and trust in me. My friends, let's apply this together in prayer. Jesus, thank you for giving us such powerful words. We're just one verse in, but I can already tell this is going to be a great study for us as we listen to what you have to say to us during our times of worry and concern and need. Father, teach us how to believe in you. Jesus, teach us how to believe in you in that way that brings trust and in that way that empowers us to live rightly for your name's sake. We pray it in your name. Amen.